two methods to calculate item discrimination for multiple choice question exams in both SPSS and Excel. Those two methods are Kelly's equation method and point by serial correlation coefficient. Two methods for item discrimination analysis in SPSS for MCQ exams. Those two methods are first one is Kelly's equation method. The second one is point by serial correlation coefficient. Item discrimination analysis in SPSS based on Kelly's equation. The analysis will evaluate and identify multiple choice exam questions that are good in good or bad in discriminating between high performing students and low performing students. So this analysis is only designed for multiple choice questions. And the analysis is based on an equation generated by Kelly's to determine the item discrimination or the question discrimination. And the way to do that is to calculate the total scores for each individual participant achieved in the exam and then group the student into an upper group and a lower group. The upper group contains top 27% of the total score and the lower group includes lowest 27% of student total scores. And then proportion can be calculated for the upper and the lower and a percentage can be generated for each individual item or question. And the value for the item discrimination can be from minus one to plus one. Here in this SPSS data view, I have a result from exam and the test for 20 students participated in this exam that included in it 20 questions, 20 multiple choice questions from one to 20. And each individual student answered the multiple choice questions and their answers are recorded as either zero or one, given a value of zero or one. Zero represent wrong answer, one represent correct answer. And from those 20 questions, we aim to determine which one of these questions or questions are good questions and which are bad questions in distinguishing between excellent students and low performing students. And to do the item discrimination analysis, it is a multi-step. The first step is to calculate the overall mark or the total mark achieved by each individual student, i.e. to add up all the correct answer recorded by each individual student, add them up and generate a new variable, call it total score. And to do that, we click on transform, compute variable, in this new window, I'm going to generate a target variable, call it total score. And in the total scores, I'm going to add all the values within each individual cell together. So i.e. add all these multiple variables for each individual student together to generate the total or overall mark. 
So we need to use the sum function in this case. And the sum function, to get the sum function, click on all, scroll down to statistical, and then click on sum, drag the sum command into the numeric expression. A numeric expression, the sum is followed, followed by a bracket. So we need to enter or transfer each one of these questions or variables into the bracket or between the bracket and separating each question by a comma. So if you click on the first one and then add a comma, click on the second one, transfer, comma, and then third one and so on. And uh, since we have here um, 20 exam questions, I had already generated uh, these questions labels in Word document, type them, and I'm going just to select them and copy them, and then insert them or place them in between the brackets. So if I delete that, add the bracket again, and control V or paste, so all the 20 variables have been placed in between the brackets separated by a comma. And this will instruct the software to add all the values for, for, for each individual student to add them up together and generate a new variable called total score. If we click on OK, again, we'll see here that a new variable is generated called total score that has in it the overall mark achieved by each individual student and i'm going just to edit the column a little bit by removing the decimal point and making it zero making it at the center and then since it is a mark and this is a scale it's measured at a scale and then i'm going to reduce this keep this up to 66 so to reduce the quorum. So now to continue with the item discrimination analysis, we need to rank those overall mark or scores uh, in a descending order from high to low. So we're going to click on data, sort cases, and we are going to sort the cases by the total score and in a descending order from high to low. Again, as we can see here, the data are rearranged that we have the highest score achieved by a student are 17 out of 20 and the lowest is eight out of 20. The next step in SPSS is to rearrange the data to be able to manage to calculate the upper group and the lower group. So we are going to use a function called transpose in which we transpose these questions from being in a column into a row and swap the students numbers and IDs swap them from rows into columns. So it is a reciprocal swapping. So if we click on data, scroll to transpose, and then we are going to transpose all the variables with even the total square score into the box of variable. And we're going to name the variable, move the student ID into name variable and if we click on OK a new window appears showing that the questions has been transposed into rows and student IDs had been transposed into columns again as this is for question number 1, 3, 9, 19 and 2 similar to the original one one three nine nineteen it's just only it has been transposed i'm going to do a little bit of editing here as the 
width of the column is large so I'm going to reduce it a little bit to do a little bit of editing so I'm going to change first of all the decimal into zero for for the copy uh, for all the data we have here for the value of the the value or the scores within each cell and uh, going also to change the column width as it's too high for 12 so we'll keep it at 6 give it a 6 and this is also 6 and see if I can copy it and if I can drag it and change it for all for all if I click control V again it has changed the column to six number six and again align them into the center so keeping the data within the center of the cells and for measurement we're going to change that into scale for all the data so when we look at the data view it is much neater and much better we could reduce it more but that's more than sufficient again if we look at the total score the order and the rank is kept also constant hasn't been changed since we have done the ranking so now we have first of all calculated the total score ranked the data and then transposed the data the next step is to group these students into upper group and lower group and calculate the proportion in each and uh, for the upper group it should contain top 27 percent of the student total scores and the lower group lowest contain lowest 27 percent of the total score and since we have here 20 students and if you use a calculator though we don't need a calculator it's just only we have here 20 students and we need to generate a group that has 25 percent so we'll multiply that by 20 27 percent 27 percent that will generate 5.4 so we will convert that to integer so we will take put in the upper group six scores overall scores from six students and in the lower one um, scores overall scores from six students again in the low performing student so in this case so we're going to use generate upper group that includes six overall grade from six students and the lower one overall grade from another six students that are performing poorly and the way to do that is to generate again here a variable call it upper group lower group so compute variable generate a target variable call it upper group and the upper group again we can see here the order is and the rank is kept in in place so k1 as we can see here is the highest mark or the highest uh, total score here the first six has the highest total score so we're going to select six from k1 one two three four five six up to k4 here so what we will do here is to click on brackets here move the first value from the variable k1 and then add a plus 
sign then add the second one and then another plus sign a third one a fourth one a fifth one a sixth one so we have here top grades or top overall scored from the top performing students so this is the our group and we're going since we have selected six students divide that by six and if we click on OK a variable generated here for the our group for all the 20 students and the 20 questions now to generate the lower group the lower group we're going to do the same thing but we're going to select the lowest tw lowest six scores so here are here are the lowest six from one two three four five six so we're starting with seven moving seven adding plus sign and then this variable plus sign this variable and then the next one we haven't moved the uh, 11th and then we move the other one and then the next one and finally the last one so we have here one two three four five six six variables moved into between the racket and we need to divide add them up and then divide them by six to calculate to generate the upper the upper the lower uh, uh, group so here we are calculating the lower group and if you click on ok and again uh, another variable is generated called lower group the next step in generating and calculating the item discriminating or item discriminating it is to subtract the value from the lower group from the upper group and again to do that we click on compute variable and i'm going to reset that and call it id and uh, instead of retyping the whole thing you just click on upper group put the minus sign in between and then lower group and then click on ok and id or this item discrimination is generated here we're going to ignore the value for the total score in from our calculation but what is genuine here is that this is the it id score and the id value should be between minus one to plus one so we could see zero value here and uh, as we can see here a zero value and uh, and uh, a zero value here and a minus value here and a positive value of 0.5 so if we take the first example here of or the second one minus 0.17 minus 0.17 indicate that there is something not correct with the question the question is in this question question number let's say which question is this question number two low performing students are answering the questions correctly and high performing students are answering it wrongly so this question has to be removed from the exam as it is not discriminative it does not distinguish between high performing and low performing now the other thing is that also uh, the question number three has a value of id value of a zero and that is uh, indicate that this question is not discriminating between high performing or low performing as they both scored the same on this analysis id analysis 
again the same thing for question number four uh, if we scroll down here again this is a question number 16 and if we show from question number 16 it has a positive value and it is 0.83 this is a very high value which indicate that this is a very good question that it can discriminate between excellent students and poorly per performing students so anything the rule the rule for ID, uh, uh, ID uh, analysis the rule for it that anything above point 20, 20.25 up to point 39 is considered to be a good question anything above 40 percent uh, uh, point four and above is considered to be a extremely good question so this question is extremely good this question again this question though it is positive but the score or the value for it is 0.17 which is less than the standard the good the standard for classifying questions um, is, has to be above um, uh, 0 0.2, 0 0.25 and above to 0.39 but in this case it is below 0.25 thus this question is a poor question in discriminating between high performing and low performing so this question is poor questions this question is a poor one this one is a good one very good one very good one this is good this is bad one this is good uh, very good very good good and so on so this is the way to do item item discrimination analysis in SPSS for a multiple choice questions and it is of a great benefit and use for those who designing a, an exam or an assessment for students and want to evaluate the power of discrimination of the questions an ability of the questions or the item to discriminate between high performing and low performing students the way to you to do that is one of the way to do that is to do an item discrimination analysis based on the formula formulated by Killy's or Killy's equation so the way to do that is to rank your data into uh, in according to the overall scores from high to low and then uh, in SPSS trans uh, um, rank them first calculate the total then rank them then transpose your data and then calculate the upper group proportion lower group proportion and then subtract them from each other to cal to find to get to generate the ID uh, we could also, in addition to uh, calculating the ID in, uh, uh, in this way, we can also generate an ID percentage. Uh, the way to do that is to go to compute again, and we, call it, we are going to call it percentage. And to do the percentage is to select the ID, drag it here, and then multiply that by 100 to get a percentage for the item again as we can see here this item is 83 percent discriminative so this is the way to do item discrimination analysis in SPSS using Kelly equation good or bad MCQ questions whether you are an educator a teacher at a school or a lecturer at college or a professor at university and you are frequently involved and participate in exam questions design and you repeatedly design multiple choice question exam paper and you want to 
look at the questions and de determine which one of these questions are bad and which are good which are which would which, which of these questions discriminate between the student of high performing student and low performing student the way to do that is to use item discrimination analysis or question discriminating discrimination or discriminating analysis in SPSS based on using a point by serial correlation coefficient a point by serial correlation coefficient is a statistical test that is used to find the relationship between two variables or two set of data and I'm not going to describe the background and the criteria and the conditions in which to you in which to use the point by serial correlation coefficient in it as I've already described it in a separate video and I have uploaded that on my YouTube channel and I'm going to leave that link for that video in the comment box so feel free to have a look at it but here I will just show show you how to do the statistical test and how well how can how can you tell and determine and identify a good question or a bad question here in SPSS I have a data for an exam question for 38 students answering 76 questions multiple choice questions so we have here 76 variables 76 columns or 76 items these questions can be called items also and the score or the value for each question for each individual student answered is recorded as either zero or one zero stands for wrong answer the student has or had answered the question wrongly and one the student had answered the question correctly and to determine which of those questions are good and which are bad we need to do a statistical test called point by serial but we need first of all to do two steps the first step we need to calculate the overall total mark for each participant or each student achieved so we need to generate a column here for the overall total overall exam mark or total exam score for each individual student so we are going to generate a column here for that and we are going to calculate that in percentage so we're going to add all the scores or the value for each of the, those 76 questions for each individual student uh, add them together divide them by 76 and then multiply them by 100 the way to do that is to click an SPSS to click on transform compute variable again there are three ways to calculate the total exam score or the overall exam mark first one is you click on bracket drag the first variable click on plus second variable plus and then plus and so on and so on until you move all the questions in between the bracket from question uh, question number 1 to 76 and then divide that by 76 as we are adding them up and then dividing them by 76 and then multiply them by 100 so this is one of the way to calculate the total exam score the other way is to click on function group all then scroll down to statistical and then from statistical choose the sum command and drag it to the numeric expression again you need you have the sum command and then a bracket and we need to move the first 
variable separated by comma second variable separated by comma third variable separated by comma and so on and so on until you enter the 76 variables in between the bracket then you need to divide that by uh, by 76 multiply that by 100 so this is the second way the third way which I am going to use here is to use the mean function again so we need to generate a target variable we're going to call that target variable over all mark overall marks and again we're going to move all the scores all the score all the variables all the items and with their score in them into the bracket one by one separated by comma to generate the mean so we have here 76 items or variable and i had already typed this in micro type this in microsoft office and i'm going to copy it from here right click and then copy and then paste it into the in between the brackets so to save me time so they are there to use whenever i need them so here we have the mean and in between the bracket the variables or the items from question number one to question number six and to calculate the overall mark i.e the percentage i am, i need to multiply this by 100 as of already here the average has been calculated and if we click on ok a new column is generated or a new variable is generated which has the overall mark or the percentage uh, of each student achieved in the exam so here now we have a 76 variable or variables and an overall exam marks so and we want to identify and determine which questions are good and which question is uh, is bad uh, using the point by serial correlation so the next step is to do a point by serial correlation coefficient here as we can see we have these questions and we want to find the relationship or the association between question number one with the score in it and correlating that with the overall mark so to determine whether this question is good or bad whether it is discriminative or not and we need to do this for all the 76 questions together simultaneously so each one by one comparing each questions with the total mark so we have here two variables the first variable is the item or the questions which is categorical because it's only had a score in it zero or one category zero on one right or wrong zero wrong one is right and the continuous variable which is the percentage so here we can use the point by serial correlation coefficient and the way to do that is to click on analyze scroll down to correlate then to by variate because we are all looking at here by mean two variate mean variable two variables and i'm going to reset this Again, we have here the 76 questions or items and we want to correlate each one individual one with the overall mark to calculate the point by serial value or coefficient. Click on control A to select all the questions with the continuous variable and drag it into the variables and we're not going to change anything here keep it as it is but we make sure that we use here the pearson correlation coefficient test as the point by serial correlation coefficient test is based on the 
the point by serial is based on the Pearson correlation coefficient. If you click on OK, an SPSS will generate a correlation matrix for question number one to question number 76, correlating this uh, intercorrelation between each items and correlating them with the overall marks. So we are interested in this column here or uh, sorry in this row here at the bottom and on the final column which is titled as labeled as overall mark. And again if we look at the final row here which says that overall marks Pearson correlation and then it gives a Pearson correlation value and significance of that value again for which is again Pearson correlation represent point by serial for point by serial correlation the value is from minus one to one to plus one minus one indicates it's a negative relationship and plus one it mean a positive relationship and the higher the value the stronger the relationship again and then for a uh, purpose of analysis of this test for the point by serial correlation we set the value that anything below 0.15 value for point by serial the question or the item is a poorly designed or a poor question or a bad question anything above 0.25 is a good question and anything higher it is a very good question however simultaneously we need also to look at the statistical significance anything below any value for p value for the test below than 0.05 then it is statistically significant and the correlation value is significant in the first example here we can see that the correlation between question number one and overall mark is 0.22 that's considered to be fairly fair fair uh, question however it failed to be statistically significant so we will consider that questions probably considered to be a bad question again the same thing for question number two the p-value is 0.36 so it is less than 0.05 again this question is not statistically the value for it is not statistically significant so this question is also a bad question however for question number three the p-value is 0.029 which is less than 0.05 so it is statistically significant and the correlation coefficient is 0.35 this is a really a, a good a question that can discriminate between students again a fourth question is 0.5 this is a very good value or coefficient and the statistically significant the fifth question is 0.7 the value for the coefficient is 0.76 and this is really a very high value so this is really a very very good question and the sixth question here as we can see the point by serial correlation coefficient is very close to zero so it's 0 0.054 anything that is close to zero or zero is indicate that the question is not discriminating between students so it is not a good question so it is a bad question Meanwhile, also the value for the, uh, the, the statistical significant is greater than 0.05. So this question is really a bad question and so on and so on and so on. So this is the way to determine which question is good and which question is bad. And if I want to save or export this this table 
which I'm going to do and I'm going to export the data, the table or the outcome for the statistical analysis for the point by serial into either Excel file or Word documents or PowerPoint or even as a PDF and I'm going to export this table here the correlation matrix uh, as a Excel file and the way to do that click on the table and then right click on export and then another window will pop up and I'm going to select Excel 2007 and higher and I'm going to call it again point by serial saving it and I'm going to keep the tick for open the containing folders once the file is exported if I click on OK it says that it already exists so I'm going to overwrite it so the file is exported into the Excel in a format of an Excel file which have the correlation matrix in it and in this occasion I am only interested in this row so what I'm going to do is I am going to select the rest and delete it but I'm going to need yeah I'm going to keep keep the question number one but I'm going to questions or items and I'm going to delete the rest so I'm just only interested in the correlation between the questions and the total marks let's make sure that I have everything here set up correctly so if I right click select and then right click and delete and then click on OK I will have here the correlation between questions and the value of the correlation and the significance so I'm going to get rid of the first column and get rid of the last column as it is the number only and I'm going to rename this instead of Pearson correlation point by Syria as it is based on Pearson correlation so I have here the point by serial for every individual questions in your exam paper and I'm going to get rid of this column as it is no need for it so we have the p-value and the value for the coefficient so anything with statistical significance and a higher value indicate that the question is good and anything below it is bad here there is a, an interesting observation I need to mention it in one of the data here uh, let me look for it minus there is a minus uh, point pi serial minus indicate that high performing student are answering students are answering the question wrongly and low performing students are answering it correctly so in this case there is something wrong with the question and it's the best way is to remove the question and replace it by another question so this is one of the uh, benefits of doing discrimination analysis item discrimination using the point by serial correlation coefficient as it will highlight the question which question has problem in it or which question is bad and which question is good again I could also take this data here copy all the three columns or just the two columns here I'm not interested in the first copy and then I had this data in a Excel file I could also um, could also here I have it here somewhere in exam question I could add it to the data I had already for this exam result and I could add it add the person 
correlation here at the end of the either in columns or in row and I, I do prefer it in row here again as for every question by serial correlation this is question number one and this is the point by uh, point by serial value and this is the significant uh, value or the p-value for the question so in this way i had shown you how to determine which question is good and which question is bad based in exam uh, based on item discrimination and analysis using the point by serial correlation coefficient two ways computing item discrimination in excel for mcq exams those two ways are kelly's equation and a robust way of using point by serial correlation coefficient using kelly's equation in item discrimination analysis to evaluate multiple choice exam questions in Excel to identify questions that are good in discriminating high-performing students from low-performing students and to classify the questions as either a good question or a bad question following the equation of item discrimination equal to upper group minus lower group divided by 27 percent of the total students and we're going to perform the analysis in excel here i have a data from an excel sheet from exam results for 20 students answering 20 multiple choice questions from question number one to question number 20 and the score for each question is in recorded as either zero or one zero is the wrong answer one is the correct answer so here we have a categorical data dichotomous data two possible categories zero or one and we want to determine the item discrimination for the 20 questions to determine which question of these are good and which are bad based on the analysis and the first step to do the item discrimination following the equation proposed by Kelly's is to calculate the total score or the overall mark achieved by each individual student so we are going to generate here a column and we call it overall mark and to calculate the overall mark for each individual participant we need to add the score from all the questions from q1 to q20 all together and the way to do that click on the cell here insert equal sign then type sum select the sum formula and in the sum formula drag the range of the data to calculate the sum from q1 to q20 a value is calculated 17 the grade or the mark the overall mark for the first student is 17 and to calculate the rest we just need to drag and hold and drag the value to the last student so to auto calculate and auto fill the value for the over mark for each individual student so we've calculated the overall mark the next step in item discrimination is to arrange or rank those over all mark from high to low from descending in a descending order and the way to do that is to click on the data itself select the whole data 
and then click on sort filter and use custom sort in the custom sort make sure that this my data has headers is ticked and we're going to use the column which is labeled over all mark as this is our reference for do doing the item uh, uh, and item discrimination analysis and a reference for ranking the data from high to low and we're going to rank the data in the order of the largest to the smallest if we click on ok again we can see here that the software has arranged the data from the highest to the lowest so the lowest score by students was 8 out of 20 and the highest is 17 out of 20. now following the arrangement of the overall scores in descending order we need to generate the upper group and the lower group so we're going to type here upper group lower group then id for id discrimination and then id percentage and to calculate the upper group proportion and the lower group proportion we're going to use the ranked value on the overall mark and for the upper group proportion we need to select the top 27 percent of the total student who achieve total marks and for the lower group select the lowest 27 percent of the total score so student who scored lowest so we have to generate two group and the number of the student to select will be equal to if we have 20 questions or 20 students sorry 20 students and we want to arrange them into upper and lower group and we want from the upper group to include 27 percent then we multiply that by 27 to get a value of 5.6 which will be approximated to six so each group upper and lower each one of them will have six students in it the scores for the six students for the upper and the lower group and to calculate the upper group values and i'm going here just to highlight this divide these uh, groups this data into upper and lower so if i select the first top six students and label them give them a label of green as this is the upper one and the lowest group six select uh, from it as low as six students going to keep it red now what we want to do here for the upper value we need to insert the equal sign and then type sum and select the sum formula in the sum formula we are going to select the first six values here in for q1 close the bracket and then open another bracket and put the sum formula in a bracket and then divide that by six since we have six students so this is the way to calculate upper group proportion if you click on enter the value is generated and we're going to do the same for the lower group in the lower group we're going to insert the equal sign and then type sum and then we are going to select for question number one the six values the lowest six values here close the bracket again doing the same thing put the sum formula with the value in brackets divide that by six as the lower group has six students in it press enter a value has been generated now to auto fill and auto calculate the value for the rest of the group of the questions from q2 to q20 we're going to select sorry undo select the first row drag it to calculate an autofill 
the value for the upper group and do the same thing for the lower group select and auto and drag to the last question number 20 and a value is generated for the upper and lower group so here we have now upper group and lower group and the next step to determine the item discrimination is to subtract this upper group from the sorry lower group from the upper group and the way to do that is click on insert click on the cell insert equal select the first value here from the upper then select then put the minus sign and then select the lower group and then click enter a value is generated for id there so this is the uh, item discrimination for question number one again drag and select and drag to auto fill and auto calculate for the rest of the questions so here we have the value for item discrimination for the 20 questions i'm going to decrease the decimals to make it a little bit um by clicking on formula form for, for cell format and then number decimal we are going to make it change it or make it keep it three or even i'm going to change it to, to two to make it much easier to compare item discrimination value range from minus one to plus one a very good question good question has a value 0.4 or greater a good question has a value of 0.25 to 0.39 and the bad question had a value of or a value less than 0.25 and also id value can be zero or even it can be from zero to minus one So they, those are all the possible range of value from minus one to plus one. In the first cell here for question number one for the ID, the ID value is 0.33. This is a good question as it can discriminate between high performing student and low performing student. The second question has a ID value of zero. Zero means that the question is not discriminating between high performing and low performing. So this is considered to be a bad question. So zero indicate the question is bad and zero indicate the question is bad and question number four or so. So question two, three, four are bad questions and uh, they ought to be removed or excluded from the exam or rewritten in another way that it's the ID for it will be higher for this question number five the id is 0.5 which is really a, a very good value and this question is very good as it is greater than 0.4 and this question is very good in discriminating between excellent students and poor performing students in this also id value for question number six, the value is minus 0.17. This question is discriminating between high performing and low performing, but the low performing students are scoring the questions correctly and the high performing students are scoring the question wrongly. So this question ought to be removed from the exam as it is not discriminating and uh, omitting it from the exam is the best way to um, get rid of it. 
others value here we can see here there is a question which is number 16 has a value of 0.83 this is a very good question in fact an excellent question in discriminating between high and low students question number 19 and 20 and question number 13 has a uh, a B, uh, uh, an ID value of uh, 0.17 which is uh, below the range here anything less than 0.25 is considered to be a bad question so this one and this one and this one is a bad question ought to be uh, removed from the exam and this one minus one is also ought to be removed from the exam these zero value for the id are bad questions that they do not have the power to discriminate between high and high and low performing student so this is the advantage of using item discrimination analysis based on the Killis formula as it will permit identifying and evaluating questions and determining which questions are good which are very good which are bad to remove from the test here as we can see out of the 20 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 7 questions out of the 20 questions for the multiple choice for this exam are a very bad questions that has to be removed from the future exams so this is the way to do an item discrimination analysis in Excel. First, first you have to calculate the overall score, arrange the overall scores in ranks from high to low, and then group the student into upper and lower group and calculate the proportion in each group and then determine the ID value for each question. We could also do a ID percentage by inserting in this here equal sign and then selecting this and multiplying selecting the ID value multiplying it by a hundred to generate the percentage of the ID and we auto fill and auto calculate for the rest of the questions and also uh, uh, we can reduce the decimal point here to something manageable and easy to recognize so this is the benefit and the advantage of using id for assessing exam multiple choice exam questions assessing the quality of multiple choice questions in an exam sheet by evaluating the ability of the MCQ or a question its ability to discriminate between a high performing students and low performing student i.e. measuring the power of each individual questions in its ability to differentiate between good students and high quality students and low performing students based on evaluating the each specific questions whether it is a good questions or a very poor questions that probably require replacing replacing or removing the way to do that is to use an item discrimination analysis in excel based on point by serial correlation coefficient Again, this assessment of the questions is of, is of a great benefit for those who are involved in education and designing exam sheets or paper and to want to make sure that the questions serve the objective of their subject or taught modules in a way that it will fulfill the requirement for and it assess the uh, uh, learning objective of a module so doing an item discrimination analysis 
is an important step in assessing exam questions, multiple choice questions. I have generated, as I said before, a video clip describing what is point by serial correlation coefficient and the background for it. For those who are interested, feel free to look at the video in my YouTube channel. Here in Excel, I have entered a data from an exam result for 38 students answering 76 multiple choice questions from question number one, Q1 to Q76. And each individual or each student answered the questions the data in, uh, recorded or entered as either zero or one. Zero stands for wrong answer and one indicates correct answer. So each question has a value or a score of either a zero or a one answered by each individual student. One for correct answer, zero for wrong answer. So here in these questions, we have only two types of scores, zero or one, which would indicate that it is a categorical data. So just zero, one, zero, one. And um, if we want to evaluate each questions and look at the quality of each multiple choice questions of those 76 questions, and the first step to do that is first of all to calculate the overall exam score for each individual student or the total score that each individual participant had achieved in the exam. And the way to do that is to scroll here to the far right and I'm going to generate a new column and I'm going to call it total score. And the way to calculate the total score is to add up all the value or the scores for each individual participant has achieved for all the questions, 76 questions, add them up, the value for them, and then divide them by 76 and then multiply them by 100 to calculate the percentage of the correct answer or the total score which we are going to use this these scores in subsequent analysis and the way to calculate that is if we just click on the cell here and then click on the symbol here indicate we can use two methods here either using the sum adding up all the value or use the average and I'm here I'm going to use the sum method in which I'm going to select the question number one to question number 76 as it's showing here equal sign sum P2 to PY2 and I'm going to divide, divide that by 76 since we have 76 questions and then multiply that by 100. So the total score or the total or the percentage of the mark for each individual student for the exam first one is 82. And if I select and drag the cell toward the end, it will autofill the total score for each individual participant or student. So here we have 76 questions scored as either 0 or 1 and a total score of, of uh, 38 students and the scores in a percentage. So here we have categorical data for each one of these questions, zero or one, 
and a continuous data percentage from 0 to 100 and to determine which one of these questions is discriminative between students or not you need to do a point by serial correlation coefficient and point by serial correlation coefficient is based on Pearson correlation coefficient and to do the analysis we need two set of data the first set is dichotomous or categorical as we have here the questions and the second one is the continuous so we need continuous which is the total score so we need to correlate and find the relationship between each individual question with the total score so we need to study the relationship calculate the relationship through a statistical test of a point by serial between each individual score, um, question and total score and uh, to generate a value for the correlation and this value indicates the strength of the relationship and the way to do that in Excel is if we click on data to and then click on the data analysis by the way if you don't see the data analysis icon on your excel sheet the way to um, bring it on is click on more and then go for options and then scroll down to add in and then scroll down here to manage add in and click on this analyze analysis tool back which will make the icon appear here so if we click on the data analysis and then I'm going to here we have a list of tools or tests to use I'm going to select correlation since we are looking at correlation and this will use the Pearson correlation coefficient if we click on OK another the uh, window appears and we are going to input the range so we are going to compare correlate the data the total score with all the 76 questions then we need to click on this arrow and I'm going to click here then scroll to the beginning of the up to Q1 and then hold the shift key and click on Q1 again the data that we need to include is highlighted and then click again on shift control and on the below arrow this will select all your data that you want to correlate the total score with all the questions and if we also we need to keep this label in the first row ticked in and we're going to generate a day the correlation in a new worksheet if we click on OK, again a correlation matrix is generated as we can see here in which each question, so you look at the bottom one here, each question is correlated with the total score. Total score correlated with the question 1 up to question 76. So now here I'm going to uh, rearrange and delete the data that I don't want. So I'm going to get rid from this row up to 76 so by holding the shift key click and then right click on it in it I'm going to select delete again this will delete the uh, other data that we are not interested in so here what we have is the correlation between question number one and total score or overall mark and question two three four and so on and to uh, and to rearrange the data uh, in a much better way we click highlight this row then right click on format the cell and i'm going to click on number and i'm going to use only three decimals to make the value here easy to compare so here from this data we can see that we have the correlation coefficient 
for all the 76 questions and each question has a value i'm going to get rid of the last one because it's correlating total score with total score will be one so to delete this one so now we have the value the coefficient value the point by serial coefficient value for all 76 questions and uh, in fact i want just to uh, color code those value so that it's much will be much easier to look at the data so if i highlight the row for total score and then click on home and then go click on conditional formatting then click on new row and in the new role we am going to use a three color scale and i'm going to change the type into number for all the minimum the mid the midpoint and the maximum and i'm going to uh, enter here as a minus one since the range for the point by serial coefficient is from minus one to one so and i'm going to keep the midpoint zero the maximum uh, one is here is one and i'm going to change the color for the minus we need to be to make it red for zero which is i don't want to make it um, make it uh, white as it is uh, does indicate no correlation and for the maximum one put the color coded with a green if i click on ok in here again color coded all these cells are color coded again according to the value within it as we can see here that the higher the value the more greenish the cell will be as here the correlation coefficient is 0.76 and here is a poor correlation of 0.15 and here also a point oh five and also interesting uh, really uh, toward a pinkish toward reddish uh, color which is indicate a minus correlation and here also a minus correlation now what does this value mean this value mean that if you have a value of p i'm going to call this point by serial as this is the point by serial now and then I'm going to make it a little bit darker so what does this value mean indicate that the higher the closer the value to one the stronger the correlation ship between the each questions and the total mark so in this case anything above 0.15 is a is a is a fairly fairly good question or anything from over 2.25 it's a good question and anything over 0.4 it is a very good question any any value close to zero as here it's indicate that there is no correlation between the question and the overall score i.e this question is not discriminative it doesn't discriminate between high performing and low performing students so this question need addressing either by remodifying it rewriting it or excluding it and removing it from the exam sheet a negative value here indicate a problem as it is minus 0.294 this indicate that high performing students answered this question wrongly and low performing students answer the questions correctly it doesn't make sense so there is something wrong with this questions and the best way for it is to exclude that question and remove it from the exam and also similar things to this also question number 70 as it's also negative so negative mean it is a bad question so it's you know to get rid of this isn't anything close to zero or minus need to be removed and as it doesn't discriminate between individual so this is the way to discriminate between questions and find out which questions are good and which questions are bad which questions to keep and to use in the future uh, exam sheet and which one to replace or rearrange or rewrite now 
this value here for the point pi serial it, although it is some of these value are high but again this value has to be statistically significant has to be confirmed by calculating the p-value so p-value for each correlation between questions and overall score is need to be to need to calculate the p-value as the p-value is the determined factor in the significance of the relationship between the questions and the overall score so to calculate the p-value for each individual questions correlation of each individual question to total score is to click on if we go here again to this data uh, and we want to calculate the p-value i'm going to select some unfortunately in excel we only can do it uh, one by one one questions by one so we need to do calculate the p-value for question one and then question two and then up to 70 question number 76 so i'm going to select question number five here and do uh, calculate the p-value for question number five as the p-value here for question number five is 0.76 which is very high but is it significant and the way to find out the significance is to calculate the p-value to calculate the p-value for number five here need to click on the data then icon for data analysis then scroll down here on the list and use the regression we are going to use the regression to calculate the correlation between these two variables to get a p-value so if you click at OK, and in this window, we are going to enter a data for y-axis input because it is a correlation, it is a, a regression, then you have y-axis and x-axis, and it's a correlation between them, and then calculating the p-value. For y-axis, we are going to use the score data here as it is selected total score as this is the overall mark and for the input again we're going to select that we haven't selected that if i click on this here and then hold the shift control and down arrow it will select just only the data and the label for that column and we'll do the same thing for input for the input x range i'm going to use found calculate the p value for question number five so i want to scroll to number five click on it and then uh, hold the control shift and then arrow indicating to the lower arrow and then click on here again again as you can see that number five let's do it again double check so if we go for number five here click shift and then like arrow is selected here as we have seen here five and arrow column five is selected and then click on label and we are going to generate the output in a new worksheet if we click on ok here a few tables are generated what is important here in this tab tables is we need to look at just only the question number five here i'm going to highlight that with the yellow color and of all this what is interesting to us is the p-value this one this p-value as it is again this video look like a little bit complicated so we need to change the format of the cell to a much easier decimal point change it to three decimal point again as we can see this is the p-value correlating question number five with the overall mark and the p-value for it is zero 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 um, so question number five here if we go back again to the mcqs question number five and here in this sheet question number five has a p value which is equal zero 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 so again we need to set uh, up this for the format of the cell into three decimals so we need to see the decimal 
click on OK. I see the decimal. So that be this question number five is really an excellent question. First of all, it has a high value for the correlation coefficient 0.76 away from zero toward one and a statistically significant p-value, which is 0 0.000. And for the p-value, uh, for anything to be statistically significant, the p-value has to be less than 0 0.05. This is the cutting point. Anything less than that, then the value we are looking at is sig significant. So it is significant or important value. Anything below 0.05, this is significant. Then this value of 0.76 is a significant value, which means that this question, question number five, is a, a, a very good question, a very, very excellent question to keep for discriminating between students. I will also look for another example here and I'm going to look at question number six. As we can see here, the, P, the correlation value is 0 0.05, which is close to zero, which might indicate that this, uh, this question is a bad question. Again, we need to calculate the uh, p-value for it as with the, without p-value we cannot really make a conclusion on the um, quality of these questions as the value for point by serial by itself is not enough to judge without the p the p-value so we need to find out the p-value and to find out the p-value again we go to the mcq the sheet original sheet or data it has data in it and then data and then data analysis and then regression again and we again we are going to use uh, put, uh, keep y m axis or input y range as the total score and the x range we're going to select number six if i select then control shift and below arrow and then click on here click on label keep it as it is and click on ok again another Regression tables is generated. We have to do again the same changes. Change this into format the cells. Change it into three decimal points. The p-value is 0.79. If we copy this and we go here to this 0.7 and place it here 0.749. Again. If we look at the p-value for here, here it is very, very high. It is above 0.05. So once we see this value here, so we have to reject this um, value, this reading or this value from correlation coefficient. And we say that there is, this questions is poor questions. And we should not consider this questions in the exam as the correlation is very low and at the same time, it is non-significant. Now, one last point before finishing, I want to pick up a, a negative question. I'm going to do the same thing for negative question. Here, for question number 47, we have a correlation coefficient minus, which indicate that the question is not discriminating, as in this question, high-performing students answer, answer this question wrong and low performing students answer it correctly so we need to find out uh, whether this question is worth considering again if it is minus then it does not worth considering and it's worth removing it when it, it is it's, it is important to remove this question that is not discriminative but again we have to determine the p-value for uh, this uh, correlation value which is point two minus point two nine four and the way to do that again is to go to the MCQs and then um, data, click on data analysis, a regression again, changing that into selecting now the 
data number or question number 47 click control shift below arrow and then click on ok again another table is generated here and as we can see here the value again changing these things into formatting the cell so making it three decimal points copy mcqs and going to our first sheet here and we're going to place the value here again this is the p-value for this test when we correlate question number 47 with four with overall scores it gave us a minus 0.29 value and a p-value of 0.07 again this value is greater than 0.05 so in this case we discard this questions as it is the correlation is not significant and it is uh, essential to remove this question from the exam and again you have to do these steps one by one for every and all the rest of the questions you need both the value for the coefficient and the p-value to make your judgment on the question so this is the way to Do the analysis item called item discrimination or question discrimination analysis to discriminate analysis that will discriminate between high performing and low performing based on the questions and evaluating the questions using a point by serial correlation coefficient value with a p value for its statistical significant value for it so this is the way to judge whether a multiple choice question is a good or bad question and this is can be of a tremendous benefit to those who are involved in education and assessment and um, designing exams that is of a high quality and high standard one